Hey, welcome back to Two Super Guys Trey Sox. I am Dylan. And I'm Vinny. And uh, Warren Buffett came out and did an interview, said some kind of scary things. And then we're also going to look at Chase, a little bit of Wells Fargo earnings and what it means for banks and if it's a solid investment right now. <laughs> All right, before we get started, we're going to show this interview. It's uh, old Warren Buffett talking in an interview, and we'll, we'll, we'll show some other stuff here, but here we go. Are we through the banking crisis at this point? This is uh, banking we're crisis. bank failures, but, but we, are, we are through the depositor. The depositors haven't had a crisis. The owners of banks may have lost a hell of a lot of money. The people who bought the debt of the of the holding company, may, they may lose a lot of money. People can they can lose a lot of money, uh, but the depositors aren't. And so you don't need to turn a dumb decision by managers into a panicking the whole citizenry of the United States about something they don't need to be panicked about. I mean, it it is really, uh, you know, it's it's. It's like we thinking that that. Uh, uh, He's trying to come up with an analogy. I just don't know what yeah. to do. It with people. We set up the FDIC to relieve the worry of people, and initially it wasn't the same institution that it is now. You're saying on one hand, okay, no depositor is going to lose money. On the other hand, you're saying we're not through the bank failures. No, banks are no bust, but depositors aren't going to be hurt. I mean, it, it, that banks are no bust. I mean, the Continental Illinois Bank was thought to be. So he just talks about that for a while. Essentially, yeah. what he's saying is we have no risk as the depositors. We as in me, Vinny, people who are depositing in banks, not invest in stocks. I should clarify that real quick. That, mm -hmm. That's bad. Um, but the money in the banks are okay because the FDIC has already came out and said, hey, you know, we're going to back everything and all that stuff. And the banks themselves could still close. Um, he, he goes in, it's a little bit of a longer interview, but he kind of says right down here, bankers have been tempted to do that forever. Accounting procedures have driven some bankers to do some things that have helped their current earnings a little bit and caused the recurring temptation to get a little bit bigger spread on record, a little bit more than earnings. And he's kind of talking about how when you have what we've seen with regional banks, is when you have people who have stability, stability over time almost causes like instability. You get a little bit more risk. You're like, all right, all these other banks are making some more money. I'm going to, you know, maybe do, what was Silicon Valley? 96% uh, of, of our people going to giant, giant tech depositors because you can get a lot of money from back, you know? Not a great idea, yeah. obviously. Could be bad. Yeah, I, I see. See what you're saying there. You know, there there's always that uh, keep it up with the Joneses amongst uh, the corporations as well, where they're trying to keep their interest rate spreads up, get their bonuses up for this year. So sometimes they can lead a little bit of pressure to maybe not be quite so honest and transparent in, in your reporting of earnings, particularly when we've talked about other videos where, you know, analyzing the finances of these institutions is uh, subjective at best. It's quite subjective. Super co uh, complicated to value even one of these complicated financial instruments. Never mind the whole portfolio that th these banks own. And it it is should be said. He said banks will can still go. You know can mm -hmm. still fail. The weird thing is this is like the only industry where the bank can actually be doing fine. But as we saw, you can make a run on a bank. Everyone shorts the bank and everyone at the bank pulls out their money. There's no more bank. It doesn't matter how good the bank was doing. It's kind of weird. Um, yeah. What do you think about this statement he says later in the interview here about the FDIC? So, you know, it's interesting because it, basically he's saying that the FDI, uh, FDIC will back depositors and has never cost U.S. taxpayer a dime. The FDIC gets their money by raising, you know, kind of these levies and fines upon banking institutions, right? Those banking institutions ultimately derive their revenue and profit you know, from us as, you know, bank users, if you will. So it, it, it's kind of splitting the, the hair a little bit between, you know, taxpayer versus like bank user, you know, still ultimately it is the mass of people that will pay the price for this over leveraging of these financial institutions and then the ultimate failure. So it's still resulting on everyday Joe Schmo that will have a little bit higher fees 
in the future because of stuff like this. Right. Yeah, no, they don't ever pay. Um, so this is pretty interesting. So JPM or Chase, um, they, they reported earnings. We're going to look at their earnings, but I'm going to show you some other stocks that also reported. It's kind of uncommon for a stock with a, a market cap and a, you know, a large bank like Chase to go from 128 to 138 in a day. It's, it's kind of disgusting. It, it was up 7%. You can see it just never stopped selling. Um, City also reported earnings. But me and Finney, we're not really big on the <laughs> stock. Uh, we but you know, but it it still it still made a pretty large jump. You know, forty seven five to forty nine five. It's you know four or five percent. Wells Fargo reported earnings. Hmm. Yeah, well, yeah, they have their own issues at this point in time, and they have so for the last five years. Yeah, they they got some weird stuff going on. We are going to talk about that actually. Um, just upcoming, these are some important ones, especially if you're trying to get into banks and take advantage of the whole regional bank crisis. Bank of America reports Tuesday. You can see that they, they bumped up a little bit here. Um, what is this? I can't see there's a phone. Oh, Goldman Sachs, uh, top right Tuesday. Schwab, Monday before the market. I'm going to move my face. They're actually yeah. in a, a downtrend still. Um, mm -hmm. And then Morgan Stanley Wednesday. You can see they bumped up too. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, Bank of America is probably the most similar to J.P. Morgan Chase, so that's an interesting earnings week trade potentially that would be bullish on Bank of America going into this earnings. I got a chance to read through a little bit of uh, J.P. Morgan stuff here. Record revenue, right? They talked about the interest rate spread. So, you know, they're now issuing debt at 6.4%, and they're paying less than 2% on deposits still ultimately in aggregate. So that's a pretty fat spread of almost 4.5% that they're making on their deposits. Yeah, it's it's pretty wonderful. It's very, very good. And, you know, here's just the highlights from CNBC. Yeah, those numbers are cool, whatever. But the, the big thing here is you're wondering what happened from regional banks in March. And this was the, the hypothesis was people are going to be like, well, screw my regional bank. I don't want the risk, even though there is no risk for the depositor. But whatever. Mm -hmm. um, it shows here. He said, intra-quarter reversal of recent outflow trend as a consequence of the March events. We estimate that we have retained approximately 50 billion of these deposits inflows at the quarter end because of that event. Yeah. That's disgusting. I mean, you, you flight towards big, safe, you know, tier one banks, right? So that's why I, that's why I think Bank of America could be an interesting bullish play. Bank, of, I did buy a little bit more Bank of America. I was really hoping it was going to hit twenty three. You know, it just it didn't. You know, got greedy. Um, yeah. Wells Fargo is a little bit of an interesting one. I don't know how to read this. Right? Do you read this as this is a buying opportunity? Um, you can see in their earnings they did not move. They just they just put up a doji, barely moved at all. And one of the reasons there's it's there's more nuance to this, but one of the reasons is it recently laid off hundreds of mortgage bankers. They're shifting a whole strategic shift at Wells Fargo with investments, and that was not seen as positive, if you will. All right. But Bank of America is at twenty nine. Do you think that's a decent buy? I mean, without doing more due diligence, it's the lowest price it's been in a little while, a couple of last couple of years. I personally was a Bank of America shareholder. I sold out around 35, I want to say. Um, haven't reacquired it. You know, maybe at some point in the future I will. But I, I a little short term options, you know, spread might be something I would play this week going into the earnings. Because, you know, if JP Morgan blew it out of the water like that, yeah, like I said, Bank of America to me, very similar business model and seems like near and dear as far as like the kind of. Uh, operations there so i wouldn't be surprised if they have a similarly positive quarter any regional banks no no mm -mm. <laughs> i'm just kidding mm -mm. ain't going down that rabbit right hole i did buy pack w at nine dollars because it's nothing i just bought like 100 shares because you know it's like usually chills around 23 um schwab if anyone's watching and they were in on that it is monday morning before earnings so your bets are it's too early or too late i mean it's already it's already yeah. played but we will see what happens. I did buy more shares. Did you buy? I, I put a bearish trade on Schwab. Going you put a bearish earnings. trade, you son of a bitch. We I have mean, a rule, Vinny. We don't trade against each other. It's bleeding off. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. All right, guys. Have a good one. Get the next one.